we have the pretty standard apparatus to try and study circular motion in which we have a bung which is connected to a string which goes through a glass tube and there is some there are some masses which are fixed right at the end you would spin this apparatus above your head now um, it says the first question says draw an arrow labeled f on figure 3.1 to indicate the direction of the resultant force on the bung. Okay, so um, the as we said, centripetal force means center seeking force, so it will always be directed towards the center. So we need an arrow which is pointing towards the center, and additionally it says labeled, so we need to label that with F. The uh, part two of this question explain how the speed of the bunk remains constant even though there is a resultant force acting on it. Perfect, this is exactly what we just discussed uh, a couple of minutes ago when we said that, that the centripetal force is uh, perpendicular to the velocity. So we can uh, just write exactly that, that the resultant force F is perpendicular to, let's just say, the direction of motion. And because of that, there is no work done. Perfect. Okay, now let's have a look at part B. So, two students carry out an experiment using the apparatus, which is shown there, to investigate the relationship between the force F acting on the bung and the speed for a constant radius. Describe how they obtained values for F and V. Okay, now the first thing to realize is that whenever the radius is constant, in other words, this length across here does not vary. Uh, it's not getting shorter, it's not getting longer. Well, that means that the force and mg, which is acting downwards, have got to be perfectly balanced. So um, we can write that in. So the way we would write that is that the bung is rotated at a constant radius using a marker which is normally kept at the end of the tube. So normally we would have a marker, let's say around here, and um, we, we could just use uh, something like a whiteboard pen and just leave a little mark and try to keep that at the end of the tube. This will ensure that we are keeping a constant radius um, during this this experiment additionally uh, when that is true the force will be equal to mg so uh, that's a, a very easy way of calculating our force f so those two statements really tell us how we're going to calculate the force f now let's have a look at how we would calculate the velocity v now remember, the, your, your velocity will be your total displacement divided by the, uh, by the time period. So because it, we're moving in a circle, the velocity v will actually be given by 2 pi r, where r is the radius, divided by t, where t is the time period. So R, what we'll do is uh, we're going to measure that with a ruler. So we can just say uh, measure R with a ruler. And we'll do that when stationary, obviously. Now the time period is a little bit more tricky. The best way would be to time your number of rotations and a high number of rotation let's say 20 rotations time that and then divide your answer by by 20. so what we can write down is if we can measure 20 rotations with a stop clock and then divide this number by 20 to get the time period after we have r which we've measured with a ruler and t we've measured 20 of them with a stop clock divided by 20 we can just input into this v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t to find the velocity
Okay, folks, so let's have a look at the very last bit of this question, which says sketch on figure 3.2 the expected graph of f against v squared. So what I'm going to do is write down the formula for centripetal force, which is f is equal to mv squared over r. And just underneath it, I'm going to write the equation for a straight line, which is y is equal to mx plus c. Now, normally I would write y equals mx plus c, but in this case, the mass is also called m. So I'm just going to call my gradient grad. So times x plus c. In this case, I have f is on the y-axis, so I can show that like that. Additionally, we have v squared on the x-axis, so that would be in green, for example. And the our intercept should be zero. So because of that, we are expecting the graph to be a straight line through the origin. So in this case, this will be a straight line through the origin. Okay, and the final question is explain how this graph can be used to determine the mass m of the bung. So what we need to do is calculate the gradient of this graph. So after we've taken some values of the force, we've taken some values of the speed, then, well, what we can do is uh, simply the following so i would just say calculate the gradient calculate the gradient of the graph and then because of the y equals mx plus c analysis which uh, i've just shown you here on, on on the right your gradient is actually going to be mr so your gradient will be m over r and um, the mass just rearranging for the mass this will be your gradient multiplied by the radius so our the uh, the mass will be so we can just say that the mass will be the gradient multiplied by the radius hey folks so hopefully this um, video makes sense if there are any questions please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing thank you